So this is the first image I want to try out. I've already done a quick setup. It's the Milky Way Galaxy and um, overall I really like it. Uh, the reflections of the water there look nice. But because the original image is a square, I can see these edges here from the plane that I placed it onto. So I would have to modify this image before I can uh, use it in this project. This is it in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is just uh, keep the original square ratio, but just make it much larger. So let's say something like this, perhaps. Let's create a new layer for the background. And I'm going to edit and fill this in with a color from the original, whatever the darkest color is from the original. Let's pick that. Let's save it in our folder with the various images and see if we can get away with this very quick adjustment. If we bring in the new version into Cinema 4D and uh, just click no here and same treatment, let's bring it to the luminance channel and uh, turn it on, turn off color and we can apply it to that new sky plane. So I just made a copy of the previous plane and then used a square ratio. So this is 3000 by 3000 to start with. And then if I press T for the scaling, I can make this as large as I want. So let's say about there, this preview is uh, quite terrible. So let's go to the editor and set the preview size to let's say 2K. And uh, by default, it looks like that. So we have fixed the edges issue, but now the image itself needs some work. So let's get our interactive render. Open up this image. In the luminance channel, I am going to bring this image into a filter. So open up the texture and go to filter. And in here, we want to do a couple of things. Uh, well, quite a few things. Let's say the gamma, we can drop this down to, let's say, 0.7. This is going to help create contrast in the original image. And that's going to take away the border we were seeing before. It's almost gone, but it's still there. So if I go to clipping and enable that, let's do a low clip of just 1%. It's a, it's a very sensitive value, so you don't have to push it too far. Let's increase the saturation to about 15% maybe even as far as 20. And then the overall brightness in the luminance channel, let's set this to, let's say, 150. The mix mode I'm going to set to multiply. 150 might just be a bit too much. Let's go for 125. I have also changed our fog to this blue color. The end height has been lowered to 1000 and the density is back up to 20% just to adjust for this new background image. Anyway, so that's just one example of what we can do with our scene. Let's try out something that's quite uh, different. I'm going to try another image here. Let's say this one right here. Bring it into our scene bring this into the luminance channel just like we did with the other images the ratio for this image is 3941 by 2217 so let's make a copy of the previous plane do 3941 by 2217 and uh, close this down let's actually enable it so we can uh, see it let's uh, place our new image instead. So this will need to be just scaled up to fill the whole background. It doesn't need to be any larger than it needs to be. So about here, and I'm just watching the horizon line once again. So just a quick preview. We can make some adjustments to this though. Let's get our interactive renderer. And I'm going to start by creating more contrast. So if I take this image, and place it inside of a filter, just uh, the drop down here and filter. Let's open that up, go to the gamma and I'm gonna drop this down to 
And then at this level, I will put the brightness up to 150. And the mix mode set to multiply for that to have an effect. So this might be a bit too strong in general, but I want to keep the brightness of these colors that we see here, the warmer colors, and then darken the blue colors above that. So I would take everything I have so far and place it inside of a layer. And in here, let's get a gradient shader. Let's set this to 2DV. And if I jump out of the camera for a moment, we can see that the black color is down here. So we have to just uh, jump back into our shader and invert the knots. So we know our horizon line is somewhere over here, which is about a quarter of the way up. So let's match that up with this handle here. But I do want to darken the top part of the image. So that's going to bring this down just a bit further and maybe even this handle here too. So if we go back, let's set the blending mode to multiply. And this is going to darken the top part of the image quite a lot. You can see the difference on and off. Okay, so that might be too much. Let's just uh, try it out and see how it looks. And actually it's not too bad. There was just a bit too much blue before, I think. Whereas now it's just a bit more muted. We can, of course, make further adjustments still. So this is before with all of that blue color. And uh, this is with our new gradient. We can maybe bring it down to about 85% for the opacity so we don't take it away completely. And we are using the fog from the previous galaxy image, which actually doesn't look too bad. But I think let's maybe make it a bit more you know, cyan, less blue, about here perhaps, just to create a different tone. And we can maybe lower the density to about 15%. So anyway, that's the technique. You can use any image as a background. And, you know, if a particular image isn't perfect to start with, or doesn't work quite well, there are some things you can do to adjust it in.